This video is sponsored by Elitech. For over 26 years, Elitech has developed from a small hardware company to a global cold chain corporation. And they've been offering high quality refrigeration products and advanced monitoring since 1996. They make great products that need improvement, but we thank you so much for sponsoring this channel. This is Mikey Pipes. Thank you very much, and let's get on with the show. It's me, Mikey Pipes. I got Daniel, and there's my truck behind him. We're just gonna do a, uh, a wellness check on the two Bosch IDS 2.0 systems that we installed, two systems in one day. And I got the Elitech digital manifold. Again, after usually about a week of runtime, I like to go back, check everything out. Just double check, it's quality control. It's quality control. So let's see what's going on. Thermostat is set for 68 and it's reading 69. All right, let's check out. They're both condensating. They are both condensating. Interesting. Let's go open the attic anyway, make sure that water is not where it isn't. There's my first one and there is the second. I have them on these high rise heat pump heads. Many of you have asked about them. I get them from Johnstone. This, I believe, is the one for the first floor, and that's the one for the second floor. I'm sorry to interrupt this important, important video, but I have a special announcement to make. Mikey Pipes version 3.0 stickers are officially available. Hacks bring me stacks, guys. Hacks bring me stacks. If you want a sticker version 3.0, you're gonna have to fork over some, some cheddar. You're gonna have to fork over some cheddar. Details in the description box down below. Let's go, resume the program. This is the Elitech EMG 40V, digital manifold, as you can see. Brand new out of the box. We're gonna set this up, and plug it in, and see what kind of results we're going. All right, turning on the Elitech. Let's make sure all the valves are closed. Very nice, that nice big digital display. Let this boot up. Hoses are nice. We got valves at the end. It comes with it. Very nice, very nice. Let's take this little piece of protective plastic off. It's ours now. And long boot up time. That's the first observation. Must be an Android. <laughs> All right, let's do temp pressure enter and temperature. All right. Let's see. Zero and negative one. Is there a way to uh, zero this bad boy out? settings refrigerant 410a okay settings all right oh, hold on settings zero good pressure setup still show up oh, there we go now we're at zero and zero all right let's hook this up and then we'll get the clamps in place they let out zero refrigerant huh very nice let's just purge out any air just in case good let's take a look at our pressures our low side, we're at 131 PSI. High side, 344. And we have 9.5 degrees of subcooling. It is basically dead on. Dead on with this. Perfect. Very nice. What do you think of the Elitech? Do you look nice? I don't <laughs> it does look nice. Uh, it looks like I have a little battery indicator right there. And is that 22 minutes left of battery life? I hope not, or 22 I think hours. The clock's just off. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Still 8.8 .8 degrees of subcooling. Let's take a look at the other features of here. We have our pressure hold feature for pressure testing. We have evacuation mode. All right, you need to hook up the vacuum gauge. And we have a smart scale. This will connect to the Elitech. Uh, wireless scaler, wireless scaler, wireless scale, and it's again we have kilograms and pounds, temperature and Fahrenheit, Celsius and Kelvin, <laughs> Kelvin, <laughs> pressure, psi, inches of uh, water column, uh, kilograms, centimeters, centimeters water column, bar, and if you're ever, elsewhere in the U.S., el elsewhere in the world on, the, on on our beautiful planet, and again settings, brightness. 
backlit time, wireless functionality for Bluetooth, and also the, uh, the scale. So back to temperature and pressure, you can see we're at 8.5 degrees of subcooling. Our pressures look perfect. Our indoor air temperature is 68, and it's, re I'm sorry, indoor air temperature is 69, and it's reading 68. Again, just a wellness check here. There's both our condensate drawings dripping over there. I guess we reuse this one. We never cut the end off, but it's all good. It's all good. It may be an idea maybe to extend this and bring, bring it to the bushes, but this is fine. It's out of the way. If you recall, the other one was right in front of the dryer vent there, and that was no good, and I admit my mistakes. You know, we're only human. We're only human. And if you make a mistake, own up for it, and suffer the consequences and move on. But here, they heard about the Bosch IDS inverter, inverter ducted system, the version 2.0, and he goes, Mikey Pipes, I want them. I was like, all right, you got it. Special shout out to Ellie Tech for being a corporate channel sponsor. There'll be a link down in the description box down below to their website, to their Amazon page, and to eBay. Check it out. I think it's relatively inexpensive, and you need the right tools for the job, because if you ain't testing, your guess. And just one observation, what I would have liked to have seen, that they would not be wired, but they are wired temperature clamps. Pretty sturdy. This is kind of like the original Testos. This is kind of like a hot pink. Testo is an orange color with the black. But that's one thing I would uh, have liked, a wireless. But with wireless, then you have more batteries to change. You know, it's kind of annoying. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and if you... Uh, Usually they auto turn off, but it's all good. But just one observation. I'd like to have this been wireless. Thoughts on the hoses, Daniel? They seem kind of cheap. Do they? They seem like the hoses that I got for $20 on Amazon. Hmm. But you did say that when you hooked up the high and low side, you actually had zero loss at all. Yeah. So either you got quicker at your game or, no, you didn't get quicker at your game. Or, you know, those little nylon washers and the way it connects and the speed of it connects you know, saves that, saves the refrigerant, like a low loss fitting. So pretty good, pretty good. Today's Friday, as you know, I love Fridays and it's a little after 12 o'clock, about to go into the pool, but I have a little more homework to do with South Carolina and their licenses department. I actually reached out to a contact there yesterday and uh, they'll accept my New York City uh, home improvement contractor license, you know, cause I hold that license there, you know, for doing mechanical work in homes. And, um, and they'll accept the Long Island licenses that I have as well for mechanical, you know, residential mechanical, residential HVAC. In New York State, there isn't a mechanical license. You know, we have a home improvement contractor license, which I hold, me personally and my company. Um, however, they don't reciprocate. So part of the application process, they make note of my uh, license numbers personally and company uh, companies you know they do a uh, background check fingerprints all that good stuff and I'm all good you know if if I was a bad boy when I was 18 19 years old move on and learn from your mistakes and you know what America is a great country and God has blessed me and I hope God is blessing all of you each and one of every one of you because it's 2021 we're living in a world of uncertainty there's chaos and there's fights and there's famine and there's war Look what's going on in the country. It's sad, it's sad. But at the end of the day, God will provide. And God will take care of us for those who believe. So we're gonna head over to one more service call uh, that Daniel was at the other day. Uh, we're gonna use the Ellie Techs real quick to test because we had a problem with the breaker. So stay tuned, you're not gonna wanna miss All it. All right, we are at our next service call. Daniel was here the other day. Homeowners aren't home, but I do have access into the house now. Uh, when he arrived for preventative maintenance on both systems, he found that he didn't have uh, 240 volts of power at the L1, L2 on the contactor. And I happened to be in South Carolina at the time, meeting up with Conrad of K Plumbing, who wants to add HVAC services, as you guys know, my lovely subscribers. And that's going to happen. You know, it's going to happen. All right. Now, let's check out this breaker here. We have a circuit breaker here. And we're gonna see if we have power there and there. We're gonna set our digital multimeter to AC voltage. And I'm gonna see what we have there. So top terminals, because you can see this is the conduit coming in from the house. And that goes to those two right there. And we're gonna have 
236 volts. Hmm. Now we're gonna go to the bottom of the circuit breaker. And the power is off, as you can see. So he's gonna turn that breaker on. Okay. And we're gonna check voltage again. You have nothing there. Interesting. Contact is humming, all right? Yes. Let's disconnect the, the uh, control wiring to the contactor, all right? Contactor is humming. Let's turn off the breaker again. Oh, look at that. Now it's out. Now it's out. Let's see. Okay, now it's back in. All right, so you have 240 volts there, but if something is, is missing on the way to, to the contact. All right, let's... Take off one of those lines. Make sure we don't touch anything and short out it and blow the fuse. Ooh. Why did that make that sound? Keep going, it's almost out. Don't be scared. Oh, it? Okay, make sure don't don't let that touch anything metal. Okay. Now, turn this on, the breaker. Okay, check for check for 240 volts here now. Sixty-four. Sixty-four volts? Yeah. Okay. Let's just check L1, L2 down there. Down here. Yep, what do we have? 60. 63. Okay. There is definitely something funky here and has to do with this breaker right there. Take the new disconnect box, put it on that conduit there. You may have to knock out the other punch on it. Take that one out. Hopefully just that one comes out because that's what you need. They never want to come out easy, ever. They're very, very stubborn. But you can do it. You can do it! Any exciting plans this weekend, Daniel? Uh, not really. Just not really? Taking my little brother to get a haircut. Very nice, very nice. Uh, careful! Don't don't want to lose that inner that outer ring. See, they're very very stubborn. Well, you'll get it. Oh, the side cutters. Good call there. Side cutters to save the day. All right. Now, slip that over there. Mount it on the wall. Take a marking, and I got the Milwaukee rotary hammer ready to go. All right, Daniel just replaced the disconnect. There's the new one by Diversatech. There's nothing wrong with the old whip, so we left that in place. Now I got the Ellie Tech at, and we're testing pressures and temperatures. And she is very, very high, as you can see there. Uh, it's more than likely some kind of liquid line restriction. The coil is clean though, right? Did you notice anything wrong with it when you were cleaning it? Was it crumbling, falling apart? Fall apart, but not crazy at all. Okay, so sounds like we got some kind of restriction there. I don't have a filter dryer outside, so let's take a peek inside. All right, let's take a look downstairs. Here's our line sets, here's our plenum, here's our old ream. And I do not see a filter dryer on this system at all. So, if anything, there may be something stuck in the, the metering device at the air handler eva uh, evaporator coil or we could just have a very bad coil outside, or quite possibly condenser fan motor not running the way it should. Um, was the dual capacitor tested? Yes, and we're replaced. And we're good? It was replaced. Okay. It was bad? Yeah. All right, so we All may the have- Inside it was bad. Yeah. So we may have a bad condenser fan motor, it's possible. We should check amperage on that and see what we're, what we're pulling, right? Yeah. Okay, that's good. One other option that we have here is just age of equipment. No, she's not, she's not a, she's not a spring chicken. She's an old mama. 
Older than me, probably. And I'm old as AF. Damn. All right, we got 0. 0.7. 0. 0.7. So, what's that? Can you read the amperage on that motor? 1.5. So, she's under amperage. Now, if I'm looking, do I see oil residue or no? It's just, just call it motor. Did you, ha did you notice any oil residue when you took off the condenser fan motor underneath it? Was there any oil residue there? I didn't notice there being oil residue. Okay. So I could have it. Well, you would see oil residue because a good technician is observant of his surroundings. If you have oil residue there, that means the motor is near the end of its life because those internally sealed uh, and lubricated um, shaft and, and the components of it, once you have oil there, that means it doesn't have any more oil there left anymore. anymore. And then the next thing you're going to see is a dead condenser fan motor. All right, so let's turn off the power. Let's see if we have that. And again, then we can take a closer look at the we can take a closer look at the condenser fan motor. Let's take out these 516 screws. Yeah, you can see the bottom of the coil there, guys. It's pretty bad. But special shout out to Ellie Tech. Ellie Tech, the EMG 40 V1. I think it's pretty good. I happen to like it. One of my only drawbacks is the long startup delay and the wired uh, temperature clamps. And we have plenty of oil there. Yeah, there is. She's, she's shot. Now let's take a look at our condenser fan coil. I've seen better days, as you can see. And this is, it moves around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, see. Now, the question is, you know, what do we do with it? You know, if we replace the condenser fan motor, we'll have more decrease, um, uh, a more um, heat exchanging from the hot, liquid refrigerant in this condensing coil being discharged which then would lower the electric bill because it decreased runtime all that good stuff but the condenser fan motor does amp out well saint mike asked what would you do what would you do in this particular case we have an r22 based condenser here the homeowner is thinking about replacing the system in the near future uh because they're renovating the, the, the basement and we have quite possibly a condenser fan motor that's going to die in the near future so my question to you is, what would you do? Post your comment in the comment section down below. What would you do? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Just don't do that though. Say yes or no. Yes, replace, no keep. All right, let's reach out to the homeowner and see what they want to do. Daniel just noticed that there was oil coming out of the uh, Ellie Tech, right? On the, on the low side. And one, other op one observation here, this condenser is installed above the evaporator and there isn't a trap at the evaporator. Do you notice that? There's no con there's no tra oil trap on the evaporator. Yeah. And that doesn't help. All right, what's the speed and size of this? Speed is 1075. Horsepower is a third. Okay, let's well, go. Well, now that I've watched the video, I know what they would do, but I know what I did, what we did, and that's replace the condenser fan motor because that's the right thing to do. We're gonna put the wiring back through the original conduit and put down our reversing wires, hide them, and see how she handles it. New condenser fan motor is in. Let's look at our LE Tech. Look at that. Look at that nine day difference. Nine day difference. She is bouncing around a lot though. She is bouncing around a lot though, but I don't like that, but we'll let that settle in. Give it a few more minutes to see what it's at. But my low side is at 71. My high side is jumping between 250 and 282. I was at over 300 with the old condenser fan motor. Ladies and gentlemen, if you ain't if you ain't checking, you're guessing. And if you ain't testing, you're guessing. We tested with our eyes. We saw a visible defect with the condenser fan motor, and we replaced it after getting permission from our client. Yes, this thing is old as a wildebeest. You know, definitely older than you. You're 22 years old, right? What's the manufacturer year on this thing? Close, 2004, almost. It could be a younger brother. <laughs> what year was your brother born in? Uh, 2001. See, close, very close, almost, almost. And we're very good. We're still bouncing around there, 271, 275, but much, much better. All right, Daniel, let's clean everything up and pack it up.
Special shout out to Ellie Tech, corporate sponsor of Mikey Pipes and Pipe Doctor Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. And if you need prompt, professional, and reliable HVAC services in the New York metropolitan area, call Pipe Doctor Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. We're licensed in the five boroughs and Long Island. Do not hesitate. Call us now. St. Mike commands you, 516-348-6300, or email us, service at pipedoc.net. And if you're interested in reaching out to me, if you need to talk to me, my email address is mike at mikeypipes.com. Thank you very much. God bless. Be well. Stay safe. And don't forget, I'm coming to South Carolina, and we're going to make moves. If you're not calling Mikey Pipes, you're getting screwed. There you go. All right.